Welcome, friends. We're glad you've chosen to study with us today as we are looking at the book of Isaiah, a prophet who is identified as the Messianic prophet. Now, Isaiah prophesied of many other things besides just Messiah and his kingdom. But he has many, many prophecies about the Messiah that was coming and of the kingdom that he was going to establish. And as we're looking at those things today, we are looking at the one of the most familiar of the prophecies that Isaiah uttered. It's recorded in the seventh chapter of the book. There it says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This prophecy is that that in the years before Jesus came to this earth and uh, described and uh, ones that were commented upon by Jewish rabbis were never considered as something that was a prophecy concerning a virgin birth. And even today, those who claim to believe in Jesus, but likewise agree among themselves that there was no such promise in Isaiah, the seventh chapter of a virgin birth, and they discount that Jesus was born of a virgin. We cannot agree with these. We believe that the scriptures teach that Jesus, our Lord, was born of a virgin. We believe this because, first of all, we believe that the Bible is inspired of God. And we believe that those that were ones that wrote the Bible were inspired of God. And when we look at the books of the New Testament and the life of Jesus Christ, there are two of those books, Matthew and Luke, that specifically identify the fact that Jesus was born of a virgin. In Matthew, it is quoted as that that was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. Now, Matthew looks at the birth of Jesus from the standpoint of Joseph's apprehension before he and Mary came together, it was clear that she was with child, and he pondered what he should do. He was a just man. He had determined that he was going to put her away privately. But the Lord appeared to him in a dream and told him, don't be afraid, because that holy thing that is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She is a pure woman. But this was all done. Matthew said, because the prophet said, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Luke is the other of the four Gospels that record the events of the life of Jesus. Like Matthew, he speaks of the virgin birth. He tells of the angel who appeared to Mary and said she was highly favored among women. And then she was told by that angel that uh, the Lord was going to bring forth from her a child, that she would conceive and she would bear a son, and that the son, of course, would be the Savior of the world. Now, unlike Matthew, Luke does not refer or does not uh, quote uh, Isaiah, the seventh chapter, and verse 14. But he clearly has obvious reference to it. And so since both these men are inspired, and both of them account the fact that Jesus was indeed born of a virgin, and Matthew believe, uh, quotes Isaiah 7 and 14 as proof of what he did, if I believe the Bible, I must believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. But not only is that true, these two records of the life of Christ were simply those things that express the belief 
of early Christians almost universally. In the first century and in centuries beyond that, uh, there was no question among those that claimed to be believers in Christ or Christians. Uh, they, without one dissenting voice, were ones that agreed Jesus was born of a virgin. As we look at the setting, however, for this uh, quotation and this prophecy in the book of Isaiah, it is interesting. Uh, it was that that was given by the Lord through his prophet Isaiah to a king by the name of Ahaz. Ahaz was a, a very wicked king. He was the king of Judah, but while he was the king of Judah, and the temple of Jehovah was in the city of Jerusalem in which he reigned, he was himself an idolater. He was an individual that had in all of the cities, in the countries, towns of Judah, erected high places to the idols that he worshipped. Moreover, he was opposed to the God of heaven. He was one that had defiled the temple there in Jerusalem and had, in essence, closed it down to the worship of those that still were faithful to God to do Ahaz not only was a wicked man and a wicked king, but we find that he was troubled because there were adversaries of his to the north of him. The kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Syria had confederated themselves together to come against Ahaz, to displace him and place a king of their own choosing on the throne in Judah. He was aware of that, and the people of Judah were aware of it, and they were terrified. The Bible said they were frightened like a tree that blows and shakes in the forest. And they were afraid. And Ahaz sought to make help or to obtain help from Assyria, a country that was growing in power, and he was going to pay them or help them uh, to come against those two kingdoms of Syria and Israel and get them off his neck. The Lord said to Isaiah, Take your son and meet the king Ahaz. I have a message to, uh, to speak to him. And so as he was one that came, we find that Isaiah spoke to him and gave him the message from Jehovah. Jehovah told him, the king Ahaz, he said, you don't need to fear these two countries. You don't need to be afraid of them. Within 65 years, Israel will cease to be a country and you have nothing to fear as far as the kingdom of Syria was concerned. Therefore, uh, don't be afraid. And Isaiah said, the Lord has said to me that you are to ask of him a sign, whether it's in the depths or whether it's in the heights. Ask for a sign as to the truth of this prophecy that I've made to you. And... It will be completed. It will be fulfilled to you. He says, I won't do it. I'm not going to tempt the Lord. So we find that the Lord was angry with him because that he rejected this. And so God gave this prophecy, not just simply to Ahaz, but God gave this prophecy to Israel. And that prophecy is that which we already have quoted. That prophecy is, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. There is significance in this name Emmanuel, for it means God with us. We find that years before this prophecy that was made by Isaiah, Israel concerning a, a virgin to conceive and bear a son whose name would be Emmanuel was that that was that that went along with a promise God made in the foundation of our world 
when Eve had succumbed to the temptation of Satan and had eaten the true the tree that God had forbidden that she and her husband should not eat the fruit of. God gave to the man, to the serpent, and to the woman certain things that would befall them. The ground would be cursed for Adam's sake. It would bar thorns and briars. It would be difficult to till that ground. God said, I will greatly multiply your pain and conception in, in the matter of your bearing children, and the man will be your head. And to the serpent, he said, you're going to go on your belly all the days of your life. But then, as we look, we find that God spake and said this gracious promise and to the serpent, which was that that was Satan, to the serpent, God said, and I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of the woman, and it shall bruise the head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. There was this promise that Satan had brought and introduced death into the world, and there was the promise that one was coming. It would be the seed of the woman, and that seed of the woman would bring a fatal a death blow to Satan. As we look at this, then, we are looking at the seed of the woman, and we fast forward to the year of Isaiah's prophecy to Ahaz, in which that he predicted that God would allow a woman that had never known man to conceive and bear a child and call his name Emmanuel. And this one, the seed of the woman, would be the means by which that the serpent's head would be crushed. And while Satan would inflict upon the seed of the woman injury, he would see that he was crucified. It would not be a death blow. For the seed of the woman, Jesus, would be that that we raise from the dead. Ascend back to the Father, sit down at his right hand, and reign over all the world. As we look at this, we find that fast forward again. From the time of Isaiah, 700 years before Christ, Christ was born and after his death, resurrection, and ascension back to the Father on high, the Apostle Paul, writing to the Galatians, commented upon this very fact. He said that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Paul is more specific than uh, Isaiah 7 uh, and 14. He was Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, he doesn't, in Isaiah 7, 14, specify the details of what God with us was going to accomplish and bring about. Uh, but uh, Paul does in Galatians 4, for when God's time was time for ripe, for which the seed of the woman would come to this world. He was born of a virgin. He came forth, God with us, born of a woman. He was born under the law, and his object was to redeem them that were under the law, not just them, but all, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Wondrous are the works that this one that was the son of the virgin accomplished. And in the weeks ahead, we're going to be discussing many of the facets that surround this one, who he was, what he was to accomplish, and some of the wondrous things that would be wrought with him. But remember, as John writes about this one that was the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, we find that in John 3 and 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso believeth him might not perish but might have everlasting life. Now listen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. A wondrous 
gracious, sacrificing act on the part of our God, who allowed his own son to come and to die for us. How we ought to love him, how we ought to appreciate him, how we ought to every one of us yield ourselves in obedience to him because he saved us if we're willing to be saved from eternal death. We hope you'll study with us next week and the weeks to come as we study prophecies that Isaiah spake concerning the Messiah, the Anointed One, the One sent from God. Thank you, friends.